Hello, and today, for the penultimately themed video of the day, after this I'll be doing some FIFA content. Um, I'll try and post it, but if I can't, then I'll just have a bit of fun and do it in my own time. But that'll be, obviously, some, you know, playing FIFA on FIFA 21 for Premier League final day fixtures. But today, let's focus on today, we are doing some Watford content. And what we're doing today is going through every single Watford championship result for the 2020 to 21 season. This is our season review. So in this video, we're going to be doing key fixtures of the season and where it turned in the campaign, why Ivic was sacked and how Shisko managed to get it done in these games. So if you go on to enjoy the video, make sure you smash a like on it, comment your thoughts down below. And make sure you tune in for some FIFA content later on uh, where I'll just be playing some games really. So let's get into it. But before we do, make sure you subscribe because I've noticed that, you know, 25% of you are subscribed. So get that notification bell on. I see that 65% or even more than that still are not subscribed. So you know what to do. Don't miss out for this juicy summer of content because you really won't want to. It's going to be non-stop lovely content. And uh, when I say non-stop, I am human. I can only do as much as possible, but it is what is going to be. And uh, I want to, you know, have you on the ride for it. So make sure you smash a like and let's get into this video for today. So where are we going to start then? It has to be one place and one place only. And that is Watford 1, Middlesbrough nil. The goal from Craig Cathcart. I mean, that set piece from Ken Semmer, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Just whips it in from the corner and a bullet header. He outmuscles the defender so well there, Craig Cathcart. Just really good set piece delivery. Really, really good save and a great way to start the season. You know, we always would have wanted that um, and it's great to see Craigy boy Cathcart do it again. Glenn Murray comes on for Ken Semmer. Mark Navarro introduced for Kiko Feminia. Middlesbrough bring on Lewis Wing for George Saville. Wilmot goes into the book. And of course, Daniel Phillips comes on for Domingos Kina. So it was very much a standard championship result. No explain, you know, exploring Watford's you know, fascinating style of play. It was very 1-0, first day of the season. That'll be it. That'll, that'll do it. You know, kind of very workmanship kind of performance not great uh, under Vladimir Ivic and we you know we didn't know a lot about this guy but we knew that under you know the likes of Payok he did have a good record he won titles so we trusted in the system it was one game Middlesbrough was always going to be tough um, and it was kind of like starting with the classic championship fixture uh, by Neil Warnock's Middlesbrough they were going to make it easy uh, no way were they going to they were going to make it very tough and uh we just had to break that down and uh, it was a very gritty and determined performance. But the goal was enough. 1-0. Thank you very much. So yeah, that kind of summed up that game. What would go on to be Vladimir Ivic's kind of philosophy and style that he implemented at Watford. We move on to Sheffield Wednesday 0, Watford 0. First game away of the season for the Hornets and not a good performance. Sheffield Wednesday just having some good chances in that one and... Yeah, all right, you can say that we had more shots and you can say that we had more possession. But actually, Sheffield Wednesday had just as many as shots, just not as many on target. And they hit the post through Lees. So that easily could have been Sheffield Wednesday getting three points there. So Watford perhaps lucky to get away with it. But away to Sheffield Wednesday would certainly be expecting the win. Not quite that end product and just not enough chances in the game. You know, James Garner once again getting the booking. Just not a great game at all. Um, and, you know, going into that pre-match, Sheffield Wednesday had lost their last three home league matches against us. So it was our first meeting since October 2014, but a game that we would expect to win. And, and after our win against Middlesbrough, we were looking for that momentum to carry on and get back to back wins. So not good at all. We kind of stalled in this game and uh, we didn't quite show that attacking quality that we know we can. Third game of the season, Luton at home. M1 Derby, a lot on the line. 
And what a goal by João Pedro because it's on his birthday and it's his first in Watford colours. It is a brilliant moment for the Brazilian. Absolute wonder kid. Wonderful play from Watford again to set up the chance. And Pedro just sticks it home. Even if there is a deflection, he gets there in the right place at the right time to fire it home. And it's a 1-0 Watford win. Once again, just like that Middlesbrough match, not spectacular, but it's enough. And it's satisfying when Pedro gets a moment like that to kick off his Watford career. So, yeah, really, really good. Watford dominant. Um, could have scored more goals, really, with those 14 shots. None on target for Luton. So they were pretty wasteful. And I remember James Collins having a big, big chance that he should have put away. So Watford may be lucky. Um, it was just a moment of quality from Joao Pedro at the end of the day that was enough. But, you know, Luton were not quite in that game and not quite looking that threatening. Reading away, fourth game of the season. Watford taste defeat for the first time in the championship campaign. A goal from George Puskas just before the half-time break. And Reading really weren't amazing in this game and Watford had chances. Um, but on, on this game, Reading were just more comfortable. They looked more fluid in attack. And Watford just struggled to create many chances. And it was just one of those games where a lot of niggly fouls were made. Uh, a lot of bookings picked up uh, for both sides. And, you know, Holmes just gets P Puskas away and he just slides it home. So... Not good from Watford and very, very uh, sad for Watford to see Tom Deli Bashiru, a very young prospect, uh, a very good player, come off with an injury. So gutting blow for him. And, you know, Reading hadn't won opening four league matches of a season since the 1985-86 campaign. So an amazing start for Reading uh, in this season and we couldn't get past them. So, yeah, very disappointing day um, at, at Reading. Then Derby County nil, Watford won. Massive, massive three points to bounce back from that Reading result um, after that international break. Ultimately, a massive, massive win and not a good performance once again. It's a moment of quality that gets us out of danger. I mean, Vladimir Ivic was just not quite showing that versatility as a manager at the minute. He was making predictable substitutions. And, you know, James Garner, who we know has got quality, wasn't getting the game time coming on in the 89th minute. But we've got to kind of make the better choices. And ultimately, we weren't looking that fluid in the game. We had chances. We didn't take them. And then eventually, the biggest chance of the game is actually our first shot on target from Joao Pedro. What a shot it is. And what a goal it is. Not a great game in total, but it's a massive, massive goal in the context of Watford's season especially with us knowing that you know what went on after that we you know did enough to stay up to get promoted so it was one of those uninspiring games that needed a moment of quality and that really was from Joao Pedro L wonderful play from Ben Walmer again driving forward and getting it into Joao and that is just a moment of magic that you really can't replicate of course Derby tried to equalise. Rooney had a really good chance to do that, but he put it just wide and, uh, of course, had a free kick as well that went over. So it was a game of fine margins once again um, in Derby. Watford 3, Blackburn Rovers 1, and perhaps Watford's first convincing result of the season. Very good attacking display. Joao Pedro on form again. Tom Cleverley with a nice goal, just following up the rebound and heading it past the goalkeeper. And Bren Brereton was, of course, the man to get a consolation back for what, uh, Watford to worry about and Blackburn to get back in it. Ben Foster maybe should have done a little bit better, but, you know, got to give him credit because he goes on and makes a penalty save. What a great piece of goalkeeping from the cycling GK. And, of course, early in that second half, an own goal from Dara Lenehan is enough for Watford to have that two-goal buffer back and see out the game after that. It was nervy at times. Watford, a fairly decent win, got it done in the first half, you'd imagine. Just lots of, you know, decent goals, nothing spectacular, but a very solid win. And uh, a 3-1 victory was a very nice moment in the season. Watford won, Bournemouth won. And this was a game where we really went into it thinking, OK, this is probably our toughest test of the season. You know, we know Bournemouth did go down with us. We know they're going to be up there fighting for promotion. And we go in there with... A fresh team, we change things up and for once we look trying to test those Bournemouth players and James Garner giving a start, that's good to see. But up front, Stipe Pariccia with his first league start and boy does he take the opportunity to slide at home past 
Begovic, but unfortunately for Watford, unable to hang on and just not showing enough attacking chances, enough attacking quality to kill off the game. And uh, it's very, very nervy at the end of it. Begovic with a few massive saves, but ultimately Bournemouth just could not be quiet. They could not be kept uh, quiet and they kept on plugging away. They had most possession, what for defending in numbers, but you've just got to learn that you've got to kill off games and you can't hold on to a 1-0 lead sometimes because 95th minute, Chris Metham taps it in after a knockdown from Kelly, which was controversial to say the least, with him being very much in the firing line to be sent off for an awful challenge later on in, uh, earlier on in the game um, from, from that really, really bad uh, piece of play. So at the end of the day, Watford very, very gutted to have lost those two points, but it's a point against Bournemouth. It's a learning lesson and hopefully a bit better will you know come in the season to go to go. Next, Wickham away, a win surely for Watford at Adams Park. But no, Wickham get a draw, 1-1, with the goal from Anthony Stewart. And it's just poor set-piece marking. Ismail Saar with the goal. And for the first time this season, Saar really does have that end product. But really cutting a frustrated figure because Watford just weren't really utilising his pace. They weren't scoring enough chances. They weren't creating enough chances. Just four on target. Away to Wickham is not good enough. And Andre Gray also frustrated um, to not be getting uh, many minutes at all. Um, he's, you know, on the bench, but he's not on the bench this week. And instead, it's Glenn Murray, you know, taking his place. But Murray, with a big, big opportunity, he puts just wide. And that was one of the few moments Glenn Murray had in a Watford shirt because his chances were limited. But yeah, it really was a game we had to kill off. We didn't have that attacking, con um, you know, potency. And Wickham got us from a set piece and uh, they were fairly deserving to win the game with a late, late goal disallowed and uh, Watford getting away with a point. Barnsley won, Watford nil, a very damning away defeat. Uh, and it was not good enough on Halloween day. Barnsley were far the better team and Watford not creating enough chances, looking limp and ultimately Barnsley just looked the better team. Alex Mauer, what an absolute thunderbolt. You can't stop those ones. And Watford, with no shots on target, that is not good enough for a side with that much possession, with those many passes, not making the use of their time on the ball. So Watford 3, Stoke City 2. What a win, especially after the you know, really disappointing results of previous weeks. We hadn't won since that really good Watford-Blackburn game. And we bounced back at the Vic. We are too reliant on our home form, but... We show just enough quality. Tom Cleverley once again with a goal against Stoke. Very controversial though. Um, it bounces past the line and you know Stoke protest. Angus Gunn isn't happy that it looked like it didn't cross the line. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, it's given to Watford and uh, it is well. It's it crosses the line that's for sure. But the goal goes in after a bit of a you know nudge from Joao Pedro. So it is very very controversial. But that was a big moment in the game after Watford earlier on had fallen asleep with a Stephen Fletcher tap in. Then Watford reply with a second goal from Joao Pedro's penalty. Massive to get back in the lead. But once again, Stoke peg Watford back and, you know, we can't hold on to our lead. Nick Powell with a goal late on. And that really was a big blow. You felt that we'd completely bottled it at that point. But Watford come back fighting and... You know, we saw in previous games we hadn't scored enough goals to kill it off. But this time we just had to get back at them, bounce back each time. And Ismail Assar with a late moment of inspiration. Great work down that, you know, fullback position from Ken Semmer, pulling it back. And there is Ismail Assar to just steer it past the goalie. Brilliant moment in injury time. And in a game that we weren't brilliant, we got a vital three points. Watford three, Coventry City two, a very similar uh, you know, outcome to the Stoke game. The difference here is we were much the dominant side, more possession and actually more shots on target. But Andre Gray getting the opener for the Hornets and you're thinking this is a great moment then. Let's go and kill this off. But it actually goes the other way around and Watford lose their confidence. Coventry get back into the game through Gustavo Harmer. And then what happens? Watford capitulate and Tyler Walker with a goal. Very well taken, but it's an absolute nightmare, especially with that Harmer header to have looped over Foster. But to see us 2-1 down at home against Coventry is not good enough. But William Trustecong with his first Watford goal from the corner, 
bullet header. That's how to get us back in the game. And then once again, Ismail Assar with the late, late show for Watford to get us a three points that really should have been a lot more comfortable, but still crucial with the penalty slotted home and to get the 3-2 win, absolutely massive. We are hit back down to reality against QPR. We lose that winning run once again and uh, it's an early goal for Ben Wilmot that he would have been loving because he shows the movement to get to that near post uh, from the corner kick and three minutes in he has his first Watford goal but QPR just keep on probing. Watford don't use their you know possession wisely and QPR have a stronger holding on in the game and uh, there was just moments where Watford just kind of didn't really help themselves and QPR looking the stronger side. Elias Chair finishing past the despairing grasp of Ben Foster. So a game that really did slip out of our fingers and QPR at least deserved a point. So another game where we just need to be a bit more consistent and a bit more clinical. Bristol City nil, Watford nil. Not a good performance from the Hornets. Away to Bristol City. This was a game, another one that we would be expecting to at least score. And with so much possession, to have just one shot on target was not good enough. A few chances there for Craig Cathcart. And, you know, so many fouls in the game. Just a very stop-starty affair, but no goals in that one. We move on to Watford 4, Preston 1. This was the way to bounce back from that goalless draw, that absolutely horrible stalemate at Bristol City because we scored four past Preston. That is much, much better. Domingos Kina at the near post. He does brilliantly well to toe-punt it past Rudd in goal. And then Watford just start to score goals. Deeney with a penalty, blasted home, no chance for the goalkeeper, but a moment of panic perhaps for Watford with Tom Barkhusen getting one back for the visitors. Nathaniel Chalaber though, with a fantastic team goal, set up with a dink from Troy Deeney, and that is a fantastic team performance with a really good third finish. Joao Pedro makes it four to seal off a very good win, uh, very similar to that Blackburn game earlier on in the season, but a win that was very much needed. Then Nottingham Forest we go to and we revert back to that terrible form of that Bristol City game. It's another blank slate for Watford. Another misfiring matchup. Nil-nil at Forest and not good at all. Six shots in the game is not enough with 60% possession. Only one shot on the target and again more missed chances. I think it was Cathcart again with a header that could have gone in and just one of those days where we just weren't using the most of our time on the ball. We really did have times where we just weren't scoring goals. And, you know, at the end of the game, Ben Wilmot's brought on for Cathcart, but it just seems like a pointless substitution. Stipe Pericha can't make that impact, even though, you know, he was getting in the right positions. He just wasn't getting the ball in the right places. And Glenn Murray, of course, who usually does score goals uh, against Nottingham Forest, well, he doesn't actually show that impact and doesn't start the game because, you know, Stipe Pericha is prefer preferred to him and not on the bench, Glenn Murray. So it's unfortunate for Watford. They're lacking that goal threat and Nottingham Forest are too. But Nottingham Forest ironically go on to sign Glenn Murray and Watford part ways with the striker. Then fans are back. November is over and Decem December is well on its way. It's well on its momentum. Cardiff City are home, a game where you really should see Watford respond to that poor Nottingham Forest game. But with fans back, Watford struggling to rise to the occasion and Cardiff did a job on us. They were absolutely championship professionals doing defensive work and Watford with just one shot on target from 12 shots. Not good enough at all. Once again, dominating possession but not scoring goals and relying on Troy Deeney to get us out of trouble with a penalty is not going to get you goals in this level. Cardiff City with the goal from Kiefer Moore and it was just another defensive lapse of concentration. Watford not doing the bits going forward and Ken Semmer not having the best of games. Domingos Kina brought on to try and rescue something but there was just no end product, no creativity for Watford. Watford 2, Rotherham 0. A favourable fixture for the Hornets but with their recent form, who knew what would happen? Watford start off the game in fantastic form and get their goal to start off things with Christian Cabaselli turning home. Another really good Watford goal with good team build-up, wonderful ball in and Christian Cabaselli just steers it home on its way. Then Troy Deeney 
in at the back post, slides home after another nice Watford goal. So it's 2-0 up in the first 15 minutes. Now we go on to, you know, hopefully get the more goals past them and increase our goal difference. But Watford can't get that second goal and Steve Papericcia and Troy Deeney try and link up but quite can't quite get the final end product. But still some nice build-up play from Watford in the first half. Then second half comes along, Rotherham start to dominate and they don't take their chances and they really should be back in level. But Rotherham's lack of quality up front is what lets Watford off and Watford struggle to drive home their advantage. But it's a clean sheet and it's a Watford win. What a win was needed when their games weren't going well recently. So 2-0. Then Birmingham 0, Watford 1. A very dodgy performance again from the Hornets. Not good enough. You see that Birmingham game and you think, really, we should have not got a win here because we weren't testing their goalkeeper enough. We weren't testing Etheridge enough. And Bristol City uh, was the really bad away game. And this was very similar in so many ways. Watford not getting enough shots on target. And despite more possession, not testing the goalkeeper. But right at the end, Watford have a moment to saviour because Troy Deeney steps up from the spot against his boyhood club and smashes it past Neil Etheridge with a fantastic penalty um, after a red card was given by Christian Pedersen. So Birmingham absolutely shooting themselves in the foot there late on when Watford really didn't dominate that one, but a massive three points. Watford won, Brist Bristol City won. Um, sorry, I should say Watford won, Brentford won, not Bristol City. They both start with BR, but um, this was a game that Watford knew going into it was going to be tough. Brentford having a great season and Watford, of course, do start off with a decent performance and they get their goal with another Troy Deeney penalty. It's all they can score at the minute. But with possession, Brentford were edging it. They had the better chances. And then just as Watford think they've got the goal and they can push on, Brentford go down the other end and Watford give away a penalty of their own. Brentford stuck it away by Ivan Tony, and after that red card from Ethan Pinnock, you thought Watford were going to take a bit more momentum into the game and with the home fans hopefully get the result, but not good enough from Watford and Brentford were able to take the point away from Vicarage Road. Huddersfield 2, Watford 0. Absolutely shambolic performance from the Golden Boys. Just not good enough playing out from the back was completely brainless and Campbell is the one who finishes it off after Isaac and Benza robs Watford's defence. Ben Foster having an absolute mare and unable to clear the ball when it's a tap-in for Campbell. Then Edson Kapu from a corner can't get his feet sorted out and jangles it around, then gets scores an own goal and leads Huddersfield 2-0 up into half-time in a game where Watford had to respond from the disappointments of previous performances. But Watford aren't good enough in the game and they really don't have enough chances just you know a game where you see lots of ability and you don't see the end product 21 shots and just not getting those moments of magic James Garner doing his best to work an opportunity but just not enough quality and not enough clinical edge in that Watford side with Andre Gray Ismail Asar playing up front in a position he doesn't want to play and Gakia playing too far up and Ken Semmer playing in midfield which it's just not suiting him. So this Watford team looking disjointed, looking confused and looking unable to score goals, even against the teams you'd expect them to beat. So Vladimir Ivic has gone and not because of a Troy Deeney bust up, as many people predicted and as many people reported, but because of the results coming from Watford were not good enough for a club of their size and of their quality of squad. So Vladimir Ivic is gone. Who comes in? Watford's manager, it was going to be the assistant manager, Cisco Munoz, but instead Cisco Munoz, as Ivic is sacked, is appointed head coach. He starts with a very tough game, the baptism of fire with a Norwich City home game on Boxing Day. Can Watford keep quiet? The team very much looking for the title. Yes, they can. Watford won, Norwich City nil. The goal coming from Ismail Assar, sliding in and getting a crucial, crucial three points. But Watford defensively getting back in that team spirit and Sierra getting back in the side after the manager previous that was Vladimir Ivic did not use him. And Wilmot doing a very, very good job alongside him. And Gakia with another fantastic performance. Ismail Assar, very important goal. And at times 
that side looked like they were back in the groove and Will Hughes controlled the midfield once again. But then crucially in that game, Adam Messina comes off the bench after his long, long injury and makes a last-ditch sliding tackle on Timu Puki. What a collective performance and a little sign that under Shisco Munoz, Watford can have a bit more team spirit to get these results done that they wouldn't be expected to get wins from. Then we move on. Swansea 2, Watford 1. And actually, is this manager going to get much of a fine tune out of these players? Perhaps not, because the thing that remains is our poor, poor away form. Watford go ahead with an absolute screamer from Tom Cleverley, hit so, so hard from the outside of the box and just spins and drills past the goalkeeper there, Freddie Woodman. But Watford fail to hold their lead on into half-time and Jamal Lowe scores a goal, celebrating in front of the GoPro for the cycling GK. Then it's deja vu in the second half with a second Jamal Lowe goal and Watford have thrown it away in a very disappointing fashion. So not enough chances, not enough shots on target, just three shots in that you know, game on target and, you know, not utilising some of their t chances in the game. So Swansea just showing the more dominant side in the second half and really just it was a case of what if, what could have been for Watford who just let that game slip and Swansea got stronger in the game as it went on. So we think, OK, this Shisko Munoz lad hasn't done much more. He's not going to offer us much more. We need to really sort this whole squad out and you know, strip it from back to basics if we think we can get these results consistently like we did against Norwich. But we come to a Huddersfield home match where we simply have to rectify the mistakes of that 2-0 loss we just had very recently in Ivic's last game. But Munoz gets the lads ready for this big home match and Tom Cleverley shows the kind of fighting spirit we need. He chases down the ball, he gets there before Schofield and he gets Watford the lead in a very important second half after a fairly you know, one-sided first half that didn't see any goals in the back of the net after some good saves from Schofield. Second half, though, is in Watford's favour and they start to rev up the tempo. Joao Pedro with a goal just 10 minutes after Cleverley's one and it's a massive goal to see the sides stretch away from each other and Watford just starting to show a bit more confidence in seeing out a result and actually scoring enough goals to put Huddersfield to bed. Watford 2, Huddersfield 0. We then see Barnsley, a team who Watford were not good enough in the reverse fixture and we face them at home once again. Watford having chance after chance but not scoring enough goals. Barnsley not a shot on target but another great performance in between the sticks and this was Daniel Backman, his time to shine after that very good clean sheet against Huddersfield. He followed it up with another in this one and Troy Deeney with an early half penalty once again thrashes it past the goalkeeper but it's a game where Watford have to show that defensive resilience and we scored in that first half but ultimately the job wasn't done yet and we don't throw the game away like we did against Huddersfield like we did earlier on in the season against the likes of Wickham and against the likes of Bournemouth no we hold on we have the team spirit and we get the win 1-0 over Barnsley just like they did in the first leg Stoke City 1 Watford 2 on a cold Stoke night, it was a massive Friday night feast on Sky Sports and a game that's always tough to go to at the Britannia Stadium, the Bet365 Stadium. Stoke were in good form. They were a resolute defence and they were always going to make it tough. But on the 22nd of January, Watford get a second successive win after that Barnsley game and a third after the Huddersfield one. It's a massive, massive three points. A sign that maybe, just maybe, Watford can improve their away form because Watford score goals through his Myla Saar and Troy Deeney with another penalty. But it's another brilliant goal from his Myla Saar. And despite the late goal from Stephen Fletcher, Watford once again showing that defensive grit, showing that team spirit to see out the result. Then Watford's highs of that brilliant win at Stoke are quickly sapped back down Tuesday night game rearranged with Millwall, which was due to take place in December. But in January, late on, it's a nil-nil draw in a game of very, very scrappy encounters between Millwall. Very, very poor pitch, it's got to be said. Watford not looking good enough and having chances, but not putting them away. And ultimately, a lot of yellow cards in the game, a very stop-starty game. 
Millwall had chances, really should have scored some of them through the likes of Jake Cooper, but Watford really should be doing better than a 0-0 draw. Despite the quality of the pitch, it is a very disappointing performance. Watford 1, QPR 2. Watford starting to fall apart, especially at the Vic, a game that they would have been expected to win and a place that they usually do win, Vicarage Road. But all of a sudden, their winning momentum stops and actually what they were relying on under Vladimir Ivic with that penalty from Troy Deeney is now not enough to see them through and they're replicating that under Cisco Munoz all of a sudden. They score the goal through Troy Deeney and they have chances to kill it off but it's some good goalkeeping in the end from QPR's Dieng and Watford do have chances. Will Hughes and Ismail Assar looking good in the game. Joao Pedro struggling to get those goals but Watford do try and kill the game off. They can't do it though and Charlie Austin off the bench comes back to haunt QPR and he does actually start the game I should say but he does actually score once again against them just as he did for Southampton in the Premier League but that goal got ruled out so he gets his revenge and Watford see a slipping away game where they really have to get back to winning ways and start February with a win but instead Albert Adoma comes off the bench and breaks Watford hearts in the 90th minute in a game they should have at least got a point they managed to lose everything. Mark Navarro with a poor performance and another yellow card. And it's an absolutely gutting, gutting blow to lose to QPR once again. We want, we really would sh expect to win, but we haven't. Coventry City nil, Watford nil. Watford no, a game at Coventry is a massive, massive game for us to sh show what we can do against these more winnable teams. On Sky Sports... Watford go to Coventry City and they just don't show the attitude that they would be expected to show if they're in a promotion race. They go there with a sloppy attitude. They go there not chasing down balls, not creating chances and Coventry really deserve to get three points from the match. The much better side and at times Daniel Backman once again making some great saves but Watford not creating enough chances and it's just not good enough with 13 shots to have just three of those on target. Watford, really, really sloppy. Not good enough attitude. And if they kept on playing like this, no chance. Logical impossibility for promotion because that is a game you have to be winning. Troy Deeney does hit the crossbar, but it's just too little too late from Watford, who really did deserve to lose that match. A team meeting is held with William Truster Kong and Watford changed their formation after an injury to Troy Deeney. At home versus Bristol City, we beat them six goals to nil. What an absolutely huge, huge game. And Philip Zinkenagel is back for his first Watford goal. It could have been a hat-trick for Ismail Assar, but he sweaties it to uh, Philip Zinkenagel. Shows that team spirit, shows that you know togetherness. And actually, we are a good team. We just needed to kind of question ourselves, bounce back and... The 4-3-3 formation is much more attacking, much more exciting for Watford fans to see. Will Hughes with another goal. Ismail Assar getting the brace and Semmer also getting the brace. Result that really Watford fans would be loving to see every week. Preston is a tough game and that Watford get the win by one goal to nil. They carry on their winning run crucially in this very difficult place to go to. But Joao Pedro with a penalty slotting at home. It's a goal that keeps Watford's winning run going. And this is enough right now for Watford. Watford 2, Derby County 1. A game that we really knew we had to win. Because at home, we have been very strong. Joao Pedro with a goal. Maybe a bit of luck behind it, but he doesn't mind about it. Because he's in there in the right position. Will Hughes with the goal against his former team. He strokes it beautifully past the goalkeeper. No chance for the man in between the sticks, David Marshall. Derby have a late, late goal to maybe res resurrect the winner. It's a second half of nerves and of out-of-hand performance. But Watford did the job in the first half. And despite that William Truster Kong own goal, Watford have their third win on the bounce. Blackburn Rovers, Ewood Park, another, pl 
never an easy place to go. And Watford strike first with an absolute screamer of a goal from João Pedro, lobbing it over the goalkeeper, getting there first. And then Blackburn try and hit back after Watford got their second with a close range Ismail Asar goal. Harvey Elliott with a fantastic finish from a tight angle gets it very interesting going into half time. But once again, Watford extend their two goal advantage. Ken Semmer sliding home. Ben Brereton trying to make it nervy for Watford. But we have a very massive win. And all three of the front three get goals at Ewood Park to make it four wins on the bounce for Watford. We get absolutely slapped in the face. Back down to reality at the vitality. Bournemouth 1, Watford 0. A game that we didn't play too badly in. We had the chances, but we just didn't have that cutting edge to score goals. And Arnout Danjuma is the man, the main man, the talisman for the Cherries. And he scores a goal that really shouldn't have happened after Jefferson Lerma shows some disgusting lack of sportsmanship in diving ridiculously to try and get players sent off. Watford have to defend the set piece and they should defend it better. But it comes from that free kick. It's lifted a punt over by Steve Cook and it falls to Dan Juma. But Watford have to get there quicker. They have to show that focus in defence. And a lapse of concentration is costly with Dan Juma squeezing it in at the near post past the Austrian Daniel Backman. Watford lose their tempo and lose their temper at the end of that game. But we actually show a bit of team spirit, a bit of team togetherness, because we know that performance wasn't good enough. We just didn't quite have enough moments to score those chances. And it's Myla Saar getting tangled up with Andre Gray behind him. Just one of those frustrating days for Watford fans. But Joao Pedro has a little kerfuffle with, you know, some Bournemouth players, Dan Gosling as well. And Jack Wilshere, after getting substituted on, is also sent off. It is ending with 10 men for either side, but it's a very, very damning defeat for Watford. Wake up call, perhaps. Watford 2, Wickham 0, back to winning ways, crucially after that disappointment at the vitality. Watford knew a game against Wickham had to be three points, especially with their promotion charge. And looking at that Wickham game of last you know, time at Adams Park, they knew they had to be better. They had to be more clinical and kill it off earlier. They didn't kill it off earlier, but Andre Gray did do well in this game, scoring two goals past Wickham. And Wickham much, much weaker in their attacking display because the defence looking very strong. William Trooster Kong, Francisco Sierrauta, very, very solid once again. But Andre Gray with a very good performance. Watford 1, Nottingham Forest 0. A game that Forest did, of course, frustrate them in the first leg, but in the first, uh, you know, reverse fixture, I should say. But Adam Messina with an early goal on 17 minutes. What an absolutely important goal this was for Watford. In a game they did once again dominate, more possession, more shots, more on target, and Forrest without a shot on target. But once again, William Trooster Kong and Sia Rauta looking fantastic in that 4-2-3-1 formation and 4-3-3 in this holding role for Hughes, playing once again a fantastic game. But Adam Messina composed and slots it through the legs of Forrest goalkeeper to set Watford up with another win, two wins on the spin. We go to Cardiff knowing that Cardiff were in form, that Cardiff were in a really good position under the management of manager that is, of course, Mick McCarthy. So Cardiff, we go 1-0 down, an own goal from Francisco Sierrauta, so desperately unlucky. But Watford, two minutes later, reply in a massive, massive game. Chalaba with the goal of the season winner, just shifts his way past players like they're not there. It's messy like from Chalaba. And then 94th minute of the game. In a match, Watford really had to get three points. They show that team spirit. They show that drive, determination. They never give up. And his Milotar shows some brilliant trickery and skill to win past uh, the defender and, you know, whip past him, wins a free kick. And Adam Messina steps up and ends our wait for a goal from a direct set piece. What absolute scenes at Cardiff. The players jumping on top of each other. They know how crucial of a win that is to turn one point into three. Then it ends. What Rotherham won, Watford four. Another emphatic win from the Golden Boys. 
fantastic away form shown. Francisco Sierrauta gets his first Watford goal, a bullet header. Ismail Assar makes it 2-0 in 26 minutes. This Watford team are on fire. Ismail Assar with a fantastic finish after the rebound shot and he controls it so, so carefully. Ismail Assar then is followed up by Ken Semmer who scores a fantastic di dipping volley, one touch and then absolutely caresses it into that bottom corner. But Watford, of course, do concede through an absolute screamer from Freddie Ladapo. But Watford go down the other end with a quick reply and it's Dan Gosling's first Watford goal to make it 4-1 and a very good night's work away from home in midweek. Then we have Watford 3, Birmingham 0. A massive three points once again, a game we should be beating and winning comfortably against this Birmingham side. A team that just had won their game with Reading. A very good result under the new management of Lee Bowyer. But Watford don't care about previous results. They go into this very quick on the off. Once again, another goal in the early 15 minutes. Ken Semmer with a very controlled finish. Then Nathaniel Chalaber with a fantastic goal, peeling round the back and slotting a very strong header into the back of the net. And Andre Gray with an absolutely fantastic substitute goal after Ngakia is also substituted on. What a ball through. And Gray with a fantastic clinical striker's finish. Then Watford have a very big game against Sheffield Wednesday on the 2nd of April. They know that on this Good Friday of Easter, they have to be getting results no matter how they do it. And Tom Lees with an own goal, which is a gutting blow for Watford uh, to, to not score through their own player, but a massive, massive goal for Watford's context of that match. And they dominate the match. They score some chances, maybe in another day, but not today. And one goal is enough with another great defensive display. Middlesbrough won, Watford won. And unfortunately, unlike that Sheffield Wednesday game, Watford with one goal was not enough. Ismail Assar with an opportunist flick after a shot from Philip Zinkenagel. And then from a set piece, Watford concede. Yannick Bellassi with a towering header. And Watford had chances in that game, but once again, unfortunately, unable to capitalise on a decent, decent game against Middlesbrough. Always tough place to go, but we got a point off them. We hoped that was enough. But we went to Watford, we went to Vicarage Road, we played Reading in a crucial, crucial game which saw us beat them by two goals to nil. Ismail Assar was showing that top, top quality and on a big night in the championship race with Reading just behind us in the playoff spots, we got two goals in two minutes. Fantastic strikes from Ismail Assar. That was a big, big night for Shisko Munoz men. The joys of the Reading win were quickly squashed by a M1 derby defeat to Luton Town. James Collins getting the penalty and stucking it away after a poor back pass from Antraf Lazar and the foul coming in from Daniel Backman. Then Kiko Femenia sent off. He misses the next game. Watford with tensions boiling and we know that a win against them in the next game, Norwich City, would be a massive medicine for that kind of disease but Luton Town away from home to lose absolutely gutting blow and it's not still a problem it's still in our hands but it's a massive blow to see that kind of veer off course and Watford know that they really have to bounce back and they do their best they go to Norwich they hope for something but they know that it's a very impossible task but Watford do a job on the Canaries and win by one goal to nil away from home. Dan Gosling with a crucial, crucial goal set up beautifully by Joao Pedro and another great performance from Daniel Backman and Francisco Sierrauta. But Watford just dig in. Tom Cleverley with a man of the match performance dictating that midfield, setting the tempo and early on we knew the way we were playing and dominating that Norwich team, we were going to get the three points over the Canaries. Then Watford have the chance of promotion if they beat Millwall. It didn't matter what happened at the game as at Brentford, so long as they got three points against the Lions. But we knew that first game against them in away from home, it was a scrappy, you know, difficult conditions game. But we looked at our pitch, we saw it was like a carpet. And we knew with one win, we were Premier League. At the first time of asking, bouncing back, Thank you very much. Is Milosar steps up, slots home the penalty, and Watford with another fantastic performance to get the three points. Despite Millwall having good chances, 
Daniel Backman pulling off a few wonderful saves, a double save as well after colliding with the post. But Ismail Assar, great performance again. And Watford showing that determination, showing that midfield bite to see out games and actually win games. That is that winning mentality that is crucial. And Watford blowing the whistle. They are promoted. And Shisco Munoz jumps up in joy. Watford absolutely jubilant. And they play Sweet Caroline because they are back in the Premier League. A little blip at Brentford, a game where we had nothing to play for. We'd achieved our goal, we'd achieved our mission of promotion, but Brentford still wanted to get as far as they can in the playoff positions. They had confirmed a place in those top four places of the playoffs, and they beat us by two goals to nil. A sloppy goal from Marcus Force from Watford's point of view very early on in the first half. And then, of course, Isaac's success smashing the crossbar, lacked the composure. Watford unlucky with an injury coming in the game very early on to wonder kid Joseph Hungbo. But Ivan Tony getting a penalty and slotting it home emphatically. Watford to have a chance to end the season on a high, a very up and down but amazing season against Swansea. And they do just that. What a goal from Isaac's success. A late goal of the season contender. And before that, what piece of play from Andre Gray. Very good running. Very good positioning. and gets there in the box. It deflects off his face. But he is in there at the right place at the right time. And Swansea, who wanted to finish higher up and try and get the momentum going into the playoffs. With a strong team. With a strong team, Watford still didn't, didn't falter. And with a weakened team, Watford still got the three points. And Traff Lazar, with his last minutes in a Watford shirt, actually put in a very good performance, but not, in according to the club's opinions, good enough to stay in the Premier League. And also Watford showing that midfield battle. Carlos Sanchez with another good performance, uh, showing that you know tenacity in, in the middle of the park. Troy Deeney gets a cameo appearance to see him end the season on a high. And Ben Foster, of course, back in goal with the clean sheet. What a result. What a satisfying second half of the season. And Carlos Sanchez leaves. Lazar leaves. And Watford talking possibly about getting Ashley Young and perhaps even Divock Origi. But they are back in the Premier League. They need to recruit well. They need to go for it. And hopefully 17th or above. And that would be a successful season for Watford. Bouncing back at the first time of asking. Shisco Munoz always had a smile on. Always knew what to say and always gave his maximum for this team to get promoted and Watford end it in style. Thanks to Isaac's success, who does, does, of course, not produce these moments of magic often enough. But it was a success on the final day for the Golden Boys, who confirmed second spot, just as I had predicted at the start of the season. What a season. That was my Watford review for 2020 to 21. It's been a long one, but I hope you have enjoyed. Smash a like on it. I'm going to go and have a lie down because that was intense, but it's been a great season. So we just had to document all those games and just basically say what a season it's been. The key fixtures, of course, Bristol City and of course Coventry, but the 4-3-3 formation changed our fortunes and Shishko Munoz, what a legend. We bring him in, we get that win against Norwich and we look a different team after that. So it was a great season of up and downs. Ivic, you've got to give him credit. He gave us that defensive solidity, but we were lacking the goals and Munoz brought that. He brought a smile. He was connected to the fans. Watford believed again. They knew they had the quality to get the tune out of these players. And we are Premier League. I say we are Premier League. Smash a like on it. I'll see you next time.